So, uh, okay, this is better now. So we're talking about faith alone. All right. Uh, okay, so what most people uh, or a lot of people go to for a scripture for faith alone is, is this one here. And it's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. And you might, you might be surprised to find out that I do believe in faith alone. Sorry, I'm hopefully going to be able to drink a little bit of water and it'll prevent me from having coughing fits like I did this morning. So what does this, this verse plainly state? It states that it is God who performs the saving work on the person in an act of grace. So, meaning that they did not deserve this act of grace that God bestowed upon them. They didn't have, they didn't have any right to it. Um, but this grace, this gift of God, this saving work that he performs comes through a conduit of faith. Okay? And, and here we're going to get to the first part of where there is heresy and a lot of uh, different teachings, uh, most notably uh, something called Calvinism. Uh, some Calvinists, or most Calvinists, if you're a true Calvinist and you believe this, believe that faith or belief in and of itself is a gift from God. And that you cannot have faith and you cannot have belief of your own. Only God can give you that faith or belief. Because if you had your own faith, that would be doing a good work, right? He says, not a result of works, so that <coughs> no one may boast. So they're saying, well, faith is a work. So you can't have your own faith. So God has to give you that. Um, so you can imagine there's some, some issues with this interpretation. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is that God giving the faith to people in order for them to believe. If that were true, um, then that would mean that God chooses who he's going to save and he chooses who he's going to send to hell, basically. So you're, you have of just a whole bunch of creation and all the people in the world and God says you know what I'm just gonna pick you and I'm not gonna pick you I'm gonna pick you and I'm not gonna pick you and only the people that God chooses to give faith to will actually believe in him and become Christians and everybody else is gonna go to hell there is no free will um, and they frame this with the rather better sounding once saved always saved I don't know if you've ever heard that but that's that's essentially where that comes from because if God picks you that means you had no choice in the matter you have to be saved there's nothing you can do to undo it so you're once saved you're always saved but what they don't tell you is that God picks you uh, and, and, and if you really understand what Calvinism is all about that's what the heart of the matter is that God is picking winners and losers and that has nothing to do with your faith or your belief or anything else that that is excluded and that is a good work and since you cannot do good works because you're corrupt and evil to your core um, so you know God has to choose who's going to be saved and who isn't you know this does kind of rub you the wrong way when you read the Gospels and when you read all the letters in the Bible giving people instructions to like do right and wrong things like don't do this evil thing and do this good thing and sending Christ into the world to perform a ministry to teach people about how to worship God or how to be um, you know more uh, holy in their life be holy as God is holy so why why do that if God like forces you to be the, a good person and you have no choice in the matter why, why have a Bible? Think about it. Why have a Bible at all? Why read it? There's no reason to read the Bible because God's going to make you do what you're supposed to do or make you do what you're not supposed to do so that you go to hell so you don't have a choice. So there's no point to having a Bible. You might as well burn them all because that's as good as they, they would be. Uh, the other thing is that the Bible, especially in the New Testament, says go preach to all the world. Go to preach to everybody. You know, tell everybody about the good news so that they can believe. 
Well, if God gives you the faith, then why are you sending a bunch of people out to try to give people faith uh, if, 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 they already, if they already have it? You know, it's, it's just kind of, when you really boil it down to what it's talking about, it's kind of ridiculous. And we're going to go into some more information about that. But, you know, every Calvinist believes in faith alone or sola fide. But it's twisted. They believe in it, but it, for the wrong reasons. <coughs> okay, so let's, let's, keep, let's keep looking uh, at some verses. I'm going to look at this one because I think it, it's telling. If you look at Mark 16, 14 through 16, it says, Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves, and they were reclining at the table. And he reports them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. We just talked about that, right? And he who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. So, you know, go tell these people to find out if they believe, but they're already going to believe if I chose them already in advance. So, um, <laughs> but think, think about it this way. What I think is funny about this is that Jesus says to them, uh, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart. These are the 11 apostles that were chosen specifically by Jesus Christ. And if anybody, so what did God give them belief, but not enough belief? Does that mean that when God gives gifts, they're only halfway gifts? They're not really that good. They're just like kind of good. And it's still like enough for Jesus to rebuke you, even though, <laughs> even though God gave them the gift of believing, uh, they still got rebuked for not having enough belief. And another place where that is, is where Peter walks on the water and then, and then he falls and, and Jesus rescues him. You know, is that because God gave them the gift of belief, but it wasn't good enough? I mean, everything good comes from the Father of lights, it says. So every good thing comes from God. So who has the belief? It's us. Does it not make more sense to say that our belief falters because we're imperfect? Rather than putting an imperfection in belief on the all-powerful and almighty God? Isn't that... It's crazy to think anything other than that. But anyway, that's what people will tell you. And I think... The spreading of this doctrine and this belief has been becoming um, extremely uh, prolific. It's everywhere now, and they're getting more traction and more influence all the time. It is, it is uh, the leading thing on any, like you do a Google search for something, and, and you're going to get a Calvinist version of that belief or that doctrine. There are, there are all the big, powerful, uh, highly paid evangelists on television. This is what they're pushing to people. You know, and I think in a way, <coughs> the reason is because the reason is because it's more comfortable for people. Because inherently you, you think, well, God's going to choose who's gonna, who he's going to save and choose who's going to go to hell. And if I know that, then what's the, I don't really have to do anything. And the only reason why I do any evangelism at, at all is out of obligation because it just says to do it. But, you know, it doesn't, I don't have any investment or I don't have to try because um, God's going to convert them, not me. Um, now, I said that wrong, but God's going to give them the information that they need, not me. Because we have a, a, pivotal, a pivotal role in, in spreading God's word. We're ambassadors for Christ. God has chosen you. He has filled you with his spirit and with the purpose of spreading the gospel, with the purpose of, of laying the groundwork uh, for new Christians. Not, you know, the, the, it isn't like a, a totally passive, non-working role. It's something that we're supposed to do. And, and with faith alone, you don't need to do any works. And, and, and that's just another issue with, um, with that whole belief system. So, so when we look at this here, Jesus tells the disciples to preach to all creation, to give them the opportunity to believe. And it's kind of weird that the creation can't believe on its own uh, if God gave them the belief, the gift of belief. And like I said before, Jesus rebukes them for their lack of belief or not believing enough, even though he chose them. And you'd think, out of all the people in the world, these guys would have the strongest belief of all if it was given as a gift from God. <coughs> all right. 
And, and did you know there's a verse that says that belief is not a work? Uh, check out <laughs> Romans 3, 27 and 28 here. It says, Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No, but by a law of faith. For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. So what does it specifically say? It says that faith is not a work. It says it right there, right? That a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. It is not a work. By what kind of law? Of works? No. No, not of works, but by a law of faith. So it's not. It's not a work. That's, it's, just, it's just funny to think that there's a scripture that even says it's not. But yet they, they say that it is. So, boasting is excluded because it is based on a law of faith. Boasting would be appropriate if it were from a law of works. And incidentally... <coughs> sorry. Incidentally, I think that this also applies to baptism as well. Baptism is not a work. Baptism is faith. Baptism is not a work. People say, you know, every, you know, a lot of people will say, okay, well, your faith isn't a work, but baptism is. I'm like, what's the difference? Baptism is not a work. Baptism is faith. Uh, let's look at 1 Peter 3.21. He says, corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. Not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but appeal to our God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, not, not, not the water, right? Uh, Peter, Peter explains that it is not the water itself that is holy. Every person who ever took a bath would be baptized. And, the, and if the water mattered, or if doing the act of being submerged mattered, then every single person who's ever taken a bath would be saved. That is, that, that is telling you, and what Peter is telling you, is that baptism is not a work. It's an act of faith. The baptism is an appeal for a clean conscience towards God. That appeal for a clean conscience towards God is faith. It's saying that it's faith, that it's belief. And belief is not a work. Right? So what Peter is saying is that as you are baptized, you are making an appeal to God based on your faith in Him. As you are plunged under the water, God accepts the earnest appeal and God forgives the sin by the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the power, the work, comes from God, comes from Jesus Christ's resurrection. Okay, that's where the power comes from. You being wet doesn't matter. It's not, there's nothing powerful about that. There's no work going on. There's nothing that people are doing to get saved by being baptized. They are just making an appeal for a clean conscience towards God and doing it in the fashion that God asks us to do it. That is it. That's all there is to it. <clears throat> so is sola fide correct? Uh, is faith alone correct? In a manner of speaking, it is correct, but it is twisted and, and, and convoluted in so many different ways by lots of other people that they, they try they make it sound like it's co contrary to the scriptures but it, it really isn't when you really fully understand what it's talking about so is fide sola fide correct it depends on what you mean by faith faith produces good works and let's look at our first passage and we'll just add a verse on Right? We'll just add a verse after 9. We'll just put 10 on there. We did 8 and 9 before. Let's add one. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And then look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. So it's saying right there that you, if you're saved, are going to do good works. That good works and faith and being saved, all these things are tied together. You can't pull them apart. They're together. They're not things that can be separated. 
were to see a fuller context of what Paul is speaking to, basically he's saying you cannot be anemic. You cannot just sit there and do nothing. You have to live a life for God. You have to, to take action. You have to change the way that you are. Um, Paul says that we are created as his workmanship and for good works, meaning essentially that when we do good works, who gets the credit? Is it us that's boasting? No, it's not. It's God. God gets the credit. So any good work that you do is not, does not go to you. It goes to God. And, and, and if we want to look at another verse <laughs> that backs that up, how about something from Jesus Christ himself, right? He says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good work and who gets the glory and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So who does the work and to whom does the glory belong? So faith and works are together. They are the same thing. They're inextricably entwined. They cannot be separated. They are what they are. Faith alone, yes, but faith is works. They're together. They don't, you can't take them apart. Think of, and, and somebody will say, well, what if somebody does something good and um, then they take credit for it? Is, is it still good then? So what if somebody does something that's really good, but then they say, you know, look at me, all the wonderful things that I've done. Look at how I put my name on this building. Is it, it's then boasting, and it's no longer good. It's, it's not good in the sense, maybe it did good things for people, right? Maybe good things happened as a result of that, but it's no longer a good work because there's selfishness. It's tainted, right? It's tainted with boasting, with our own boasting. So it, it, to God, it's no longer a good work anymore. You received your reward. That's what Jesus said to the Pharisees who were out there saying, look at all the money I'm giving. Look at what I'm doing, you know? It's because, they, was that good that they were giving money? Sure, it was good. But they were doing it to get credit for themselves. And so it was no longer a good work. It wasn't good. Only good works glorify God. And therefore, they can't be taken apart. They have to be together. And, and just for a little bit more backing on this, this is Martin Luther's most hated book in the Bible. It's James, <laughs> the book of James. James 2.26 says, For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. And then look at James 2.18 and 19. But someone may well say, You have faith, and I have works. And he says, Show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Meaning that you don't really have faith. He says, You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. So he's like, you know, faith alone, taken in the context of a Calvinist, is demonic belief, basically. That's what it is. That's all, that's all the depth there is to it. <coughs> so, are you saved by faith alone? Well, in respect to the fact that you cannot save yourself and God uses your faith and the work of Jesus Christ's resurrection to cleanse you of your sin, yes, that is true. Does it also mean that faith and works done in faith are inextricably connected? Yes. In order for faith alone to be true, you have to mean that faith and works are connected together. If you believe that standing in the path of I always say this as, as something um, to maybe illustrate what true belief is all about. If you really believe something, then you're going to take action when you do it. And I've used this example a lot of times, but I think that it's really pertinent. If you're standing on the train tracks and you see a train coming down the tracks at, at 110 miles an hour, just, you know, one of these electric trains just flying towards you at blinding speed, and you're standing there and you know that that thing is going to hit you. You believe it with all your heart and all your mind, all your soul. You believe that train's going to hit you. You're going to move away from or move off the train tracks because you believe it. That is works in action right there. 
you walking off those train tracks is works. Those are, you know, that's what, that's what true belief in God is all about. If you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He is your Savior, then you will act that way like you do really believe it. That is going to be your life. And, though, and that is faith that saves. That is faith that saves. So faith plus works. I will show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead because you get hit by the train. Right? You'd be dead. <laughs> so they just they just are all together. And and, and when you hear faith alone from people <coughs> that you know, remember these verses, remember this stuff because it's important because there's a lot of people that think that they can just pray Jesus into their heart and they're all set. Everything's all good, you know, forever. But it's not like that. There's a lot more to it in the Bible. There's, there's a whole lot of pages in that Bible and a lot of instruction in there that people need to learn and grow and become more um, enlightened by than just praying Jesus in their heart for five minutes. You know, there's a lot more to it than that. <clears throat> so at this time, I, uh, I want to uh, extend an invitation. Anybody out there who is not yet a Christian, that if you believe and you repent and you are baptized, and in repentance, okay, is ending your bad behavior and adopting good behavior. That's what repentance is. So you can say, believe, repent, be baptized. Then you will receive forgiveness of sin. You will receive eternal life. And if you want to start on that path today, then I want to encourage you to come forward as we stand and we sing our closing song, I am thine, O Lord.